Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. We meet today in our second lesson of phonetics for second year LMD level. Today we will try to study stress. So what is stress? Now of course when we say stress, we all remember okay, uh, that kind of, uh, if you can say, focus, emphasis, concentration and energy, right? and the prominence, right, which are put upon a particular syllable, particular syllable. That's why when we have a stressed syllable, it means uh, this syllable is stressed with more energy, right, more force and more prominence than the other syllables, clear, the other syllables. For example, I have the words carry, as you see here, carry, so cap is stressed, right, pronounced with more energy, more force, okay, and also more prominence. A go, a go, so go is stressed here also. Organize, so O here is the stressed syllable. And also university, university, so verb is my stressed syllable in this word. Now, as you can notice here, that usually the stress syllable is uh, longer and louder, right? When we say stress syllable in the word, it means it is longer and louder than the other syllables. Clear? Good. Now, of course, when we want to represent the stress, it's marked, of course, we put simply uh, long or uh, short, sorry, short, vertical line, uh, high up before the syllable. Okay, like uh, what is shown on uh, on the board. Good. Now for the English uh, language, all right, and the accented pattern of the English word, right, of the English word, uh, it can be considered as uh, fixed since the stress falls on the same syllable in the word or in a given word. For example, I have the word arrive, so always. Uh, uh, second syllable is stressed. Clear. Right is always stressed. Right. So here it is fixed. It means it's always on the second syllable. Clear. Also, from the other hand, or on the other hand, we can say that it is free. The accent pattern of the English word is free. How free? Free, we mean <coughs> that uh, this. Uh, stress huh, may fall on the first or the second or the third or the last syllable in a given word. Sometimes it's on the first syllable okay, in a word, other times it is on the second syllable on another word, right, and so on. So, for example, here I have some examples. In the word water, water, clear. In the word water, here, Wo is my stressed syllable. It's the first one. In the second word, I have together. Together. So, ga here is second syllable, which is stressed also. Clear? Right. Uh, also, I have third word. It is information. Information. So, may is my stressed syllable. It's third one here. Last word also, it is volunteer. Tia is the last syllable in this word, and it is stressed. So you see here kind of uh, difference in right uh, the stress position in the English word. That's why it is considered as as free, as free. Good. Now uh, this stress in English has also what we call certain levels, levels, right? Levels. We have what we call Primary stress, primary stress, it is the uh, one, okay, which is stronger, right, and longer and louder and more prominent. We have also secondary stress, secondary stress, it is a bit weaker than the primary stress, okay, it's weaker than the primary stress, and we represent this uh, secondary stress also by uh, a comma which comes at the bottom before the syllable. Clear? 
before the syllable. Uh, so here we have these two counterparts, primary stress and secondary stress. And also we have the third level, which is unstressed syllable. The unstressed syllable, where there is no stress. No stress. Clear. Now, let's take some examples to see right, the three levels right, in uh, these words. For example, I have the word organization. Organization. So here I have O takes secondary stress. G and stress. Nine and stress. Z is taking primary stress. Clear. Shun is, of course, unstressed. Second word is photographic. Photographic. So, pho takes secondary stress, as you see here with its mark. To is unstressed. Gra is the stressed syllable, primary stress. Clear. And fic is unstressed, suffix unstressed. Good. Now, what characterizes right, the stressed syllable in the English word? Now, the stressed syllable has specific characteristics, specific features, which made it or makes it uh, distinctive, right, from the other syllables. Stressed. Okay, syllable, unlike the others, which are unstressed. Now, there are four factors which uh, create what we call the prominence. Clear? Because the stressed syllable is prominent, more prominent than the other syllables, clear, than the other uh, syllables. So, these stressed syllables, which are more prominent than the other syllables, and uh, which are characterized by prominence, right, uh, this feature of prominence is stem or depends on four main factors. Number one, the first Characteristic, right? And factor is pitch. Pitch, right? Pitch here uh, means that uh, kind of uh, level, level of sound, level of sound when it's very high or low. Pitch, right? Pitch, level of sound. So the stressed syllable has, right, higher pitch than the unstressed syllable, clear. It always has higher pitch than the unstressed syllable. It has a higher, okay, you can say, uh, level of sound, right, than the other syllables. Good. Number two also, second characteristic, which uh, makes uh, the stressed syllables, right, prominent and stressed is energy of articulation, energy of articulation it means the stressed syllable is louder clear louder than the other and stressed syllable pronounce it pronounce it okay more loudly than the other syllables clear which are unstressed of course also third factor is quantity or duration or duration here of course we mean that the stressed syllable is longer in time when it's pronounced than the unstressed syllables it's longer in time, clear, longer in time than the stressed syllables, right. The fourth uh, factor or characteristic of the stressed syllable is quality, quality, mainly of the vowel that this stressed syllable contains, because stressed syllables usually have strong vowels, they contain strong vowels, like a, a, clear. O and also the other long vowels like O, uh, O, right, E, and so on. But the weak vowels like uh, A, Shba, right, and short E and short O, right, are frequently unstressed. Okay, in polysyllabic words. It means the syllables which contain these uh, weak vowels, three ones, that are usually, okay, uh, given unstressed uh, syllables, usually. Clear. And stressed syllable. Good. Now, what is left about the stress in this lesson is stress position or stress placement. You know, stress has different positions in the English word. 
Right, and in the English sentence too. Right. So, at the level of the world, there are certain factors, right, which determine and decide the stress position and the stress placement. Right. So, these factors uh, determine and uh, decide where exactly the stress should be placed. Okay, on which cell? The first factor is the morphological structure of the world. It means we must look if this world is simple world or complex world. Compound noun, right. Or simple one noun, right. What this world contains, uh, affixes or not? Does it contain this suffix or that suffix? Right. Clear. Because all these have their own rules and their own okay, positions with regard to the stress placement. Right, they are not the similar. The complex word has its own uh, rules. The simple word has its own rules. Clear. Also, for example, with certain suffixes, the, the stress is placed in particular uh, syllable. With other suffixes, it's on another. Clear. Uh, syllable and so on and so forth. Clear. So, number one, the morphological structure of the, of the, of the world plays a very important role in putting the stress in the right position. Good. Second also, the grammatical category of the word. Category of the word. Whether it's a noun, or verb, or adjective, or adverb, or what. So also, the different parts of speech have an okay, important role to determine where the stress is okay, uh, supposed to be placed and positioned. Clear. The noun has its own rules. Verb its own rules too. Right. And so on and so forth. Third factor also is the number of uh, syllables, right, in the word. Because, for example, two syllable words have different rules from three syllable words. Clear. Now, every, uh, if you can say, uh, unity of syllables within a word has its own rule also its own rule two syllable uh, for example word it's not like uh, three syllable word clear right two syllable verb it's not like for example two syllable noun and so on and so forth the last factor is the phonological structure of the syllable phonological structure it means that combination of uh, what of uh, onset nucleus and coda and coda. So here we must recognize, we must know very well, right, the elements or the sounds which belong to a particular unit of syllable. Clear? Of a syllable. It means it's uh, onset and nucleus and coda within one word. Right. Here they form to me that syllable, which is, for example, stressed. It means the other sounds belong to other, okay, units are not stressed, they are unstressed, because they don't belong to this phonological right unit within this right syllable. For example, I have a gao, huh? a gao, so here I have a, it's one syllable, and gao, second syllable. Right, so for gao, second one here is, is, is stressed, it is stressed. So here we know that second one is gao, it contains onset, and only nucleus without coda, it means here I mustn't put my stress, for example, on a. Uh, because I know that, okay, the unit, phonological unit or structure of this syllable starts from, uh, from uh, ga and also a. Uh, not with a, uh, with, with a. Uh, clear? With a. Uh. So, this is simply all we can say about the stress in the English word in general. Of course, Things are a bit detailed, but just with careful, uh, if you can say, attention, you can, uh, if you can say, figure out, right, you can be able to distinguish between the different uh, parts, different elements, different, right, also uh, levels within this, uh, if you can say, uh, part, which is stress, which is a very essential part in English, speech and pronunciation. Thank you.